Grace to you and peace from the God who comes to us in Jesus Christ. Whether you come to worship this morning through Redeemer Lutheran Church as a believer, as a seeker, as a doubter, as a combination of any of those, know that here you are welcome. Let us worship God. A reading from Romans, the 13th chapter. Don't run up debts, except for the huge debt of love you owe each other. When you love others, you complete what the law has been after all along. The law code, don't sleep with another person's spouse, don't take someone's life, don't take what isn't yours, don't always be wanting what you don't have, and any other don't you can think of, finally adds up to this. Love other people as well as you do yourself. You can't go wrong when you love others. When you add up everything in the law code, the sum total is love. But make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all your day-to-day -day obligations that you lose track of the time and doze off oblivious to God. The night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation work God began when we first believed. We can't afford to waste a minute. Must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity and indulgence, in sleeping around and drunkenness, in bickering and grabbing everything in sight. Get out of bed and get dressed. Don't loiter and linger, waiting until the very last minute. Dress yourselves in Christ and be up and about. Word of God, word of life. I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your teaching. I shall keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood. 
Give me life in your way. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the reproach that I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments, by your righteousness enliven me. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your sister or brother in the congregation should commit some wrong against you, go and point out the error, but keep it between the two of you. If she or he listens to you, you have won a loved one back. If not, try again, but take one or two others with you, so that every case may stand on the word of two or three witnesses. If your sister or brother refuses to listen to them, refer the matter to the church. If she or he ignores even the church, then treat that sister or brother as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. The truth is, whatever you declare bound on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you declare loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you, if two of you on earth join in agreement to pray for anything whatsoever, it will be granted you by my Abba God in heaven, where two or three are gathered in my name. I am there in their midst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What in the world does Jesus mean when he says, whatever you declare bound on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you declare loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven? And what does that mean for us in September 2020? A lot of Christians seem to believe the way we follow Jesus is to freeze the teachings of the Bible into whatever they may have meant two or three thousand years ago. All we have to do to follow Jesus is to figure out what those words meant when they were first written and then get ourselves and everybody else to live like that. So today, Those stories about slaves, women, people who engage in homosexual sex, and those who don't believe the right things about God or Jesus mean exactly what they meant then. It's that simple. Just look at the words in our favorite version of the Bible, try to figure out what they meant when they were written, and voila! We know what God is saying to us in September 2020. God's word never changes. But that means God is dead. That means God's spirit isn't blowing, breathing, or burning through us and through the Bible. That means God spoke once, And what God said is in the Bible. But God doesn't have anything else to say. God doesn't have anything new to say. God is no longer speaking. And if that's the case, then we can just worship the words of the Bible in whatever version we prefer. Because if God doesn't speak anymore, if Holy Spirit doesn't bring us to new ways of hearing and living God's word, then all we have to do to follow Jesus is freeze the meaning of the words of the Bible into whatever our favorite expert says those words meant two or three thousand years ago. Nothing could be clearer. 
and nothing could be less faithful. Because our faith assures us God is still speaking. Our faith promises us Christ's spirit is alive. In this morning's reading, Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. And Matthew wrote those words at least 45 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. So Matthew was saying to his community, when two or three are gathered, the living spirit of Christ is in our midst. And that living spirit is there not just to repeat old meanings of old words, not to say women should be silent in the church, or gay people shouldn't be allowed to express their love sexually, or only Christians are saved from hell. In today's gospel reading, Jesus is saying, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. Because out of that ancient word, the living spirit of Christ has a new word to speak for us in this moment, in this place, in this time. When we gather, the living spirit of Christ comes into our midst and shouts, God is still speaking. Whenever and wherever we gather, the living spirit shouts, you can't follow me just by looking at what's in the Bible and saying that's all you need to know. My words are living words. I am living word. Bring those old words into this moment. Gather with several others. And then you and I will open ourselves and struggle honestly to discover what those words mean for this time and this moment. That's what Jesus means in this morning's gospel when he says, whatever you declare bound on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you declare loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. He's saying to the church, when you hear how the Bible tells you to follow God and follow me, look at what those words are saying. But don't just do what they say without asking yourself, what will the impact of this be? If we interpret these words in old ways, will they bring people closer to God? Or will they make God one they want to flee from? For example, earlier in Matthew's gospel, religious leaders criticized Jesus for letting his hungry disciples pick grain on the Sabbath. Later, these religious leaders criticized Jesus for healing someone on the Sabbath. In both cases, Jesus shows the Pharisees that God is still speaking. God is saying, I loose you from any understanding of Sabbath that denies compassion and justice to anyone. In fact, in Jesus' reinterpretation of the Sabbath laws, Jesus is declaring that God is loosing people from any ways that any of God's laws have been used to deny compassion and justice to anyone. Jesus says, I bind you to showing your love for God and showing compassion to everyone. All whom you come across are to receive compassion and justice. That is what I bind you to. And I call you to be loosed 
from any ways you have followed God's laws in ways that deny compassion and justice to anyone. Jesus does an amazing thing in Matthew's gospel. He says, you know all those laws that you thought you understood? You know all those laws you were bound to as if your life depended on it? Well, I'm here to give you a new word. All you have to do to follow any of God's laws is to do justice and show compassion. That's it. Do justice and show compassion. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew's Gospel. Do to others what you want them to do to you. If you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You tithe mint, dill, and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy. In all these ways, Jesus says, loose yourself from what you've always thought these words meant. Listen to how spirit calls you to bind yourself to a fresh word from me. Bind yourselves to this word that God is still speaking. God is speaking a fresh word for this moment and this time. And the church needs to proclaim that. Everything that this world is facing right now needs a fresh word from God. We need to loose Christianity from the ways it turns the Bible into a weapon against so many of the children God loves. Christ's living spirit loosens us from all the ways we limit compassion and justice. The still speaking God binds us to say and do only what brings compassion and justice alive in this moment, in this time. In the last quarter of the first century, when Matthew's gospel was written, rabbis gathered near Jerusalem and were doing the same thing Jesus talks about. When these rabbis gathered to go through their sacred stories and listen for what God was saying to them, God's Holy Spirit led them to a profound place, a profound discovery. The living spirit of the still speaking God led them to conclude that the only faithful way they could hear every word of scripture is in a way that brings people to a deeper compassion. It didn't matter if this new way of hearing God's word meant that they had to totally change how those stories had always been interpreted. Being faithful, these rabbis discovered, wasn't about holding on to what everyone said the Bible story used to mean. God had spoken a new word to these rabbis. And the word they heard was a clear word. When you tell people what my teachings mean, God says, you must be guided by the principle of compassion. You must avoid using my word to spread hatred. Once again, 
what those rabbis heard the still speaking God say. When you tell people what my teachings mean, you must be guided by the principle of compassion. You must avoid using my word to spread hatred. Jesus and the rabbis tell those who wish to be faithful to God, don't just repeat the words you read in scripture. Don't just parrot what you think those words have always meant. Let God's spirit blow, breathe, and burn through you and those words. If you use those words to spread any kind of hatred, you are breaking God's heart and breaking God's law. The God who is still speaking always is speaking a word of compassion and justice. Always. It was on this Sunday, exactly three years ago, that I began serving you as your pastor. Dr. Mark Allen Powell preached on this story of binding and loosing. It was Redeemer's 60th anniversary. You had a blowout worship service, followed by a perfectly Lutheran picnic on the lawn. I was very nervous that day. I had no idea what this adventure together would look like, no idea what the road we would travel would involve and ask of us. There was one thing I was sure of, though, on that day. I was sure that you, Redeemer Lutheran Church, are a community where that living spirit of Christ breathes, blows, and burns. You are a place where that living spirit of Christ has a home. Over the years, you have opened yourselves to the new and the bold. I know that sounds like a soap opera title, but it's the best I can come up with. New and bold. 28 years before it was the politically correct thing to do, you became the first Lutheran church in the entire state of Ohio to say to sexual minorities, welcome, you are home. We celebrate you. Now, we are opening ourselves to having hard, holy, and honest conversations about racism, conversations that many faith communities would run from because they risk disturbing the peace. You are doing what Jesus and the rabbis heard God call them to do in the first century, to be willing to let go of what we've always heard God's will was supposed to be, and instead, open ourselves to the glorious and deeply unsettling truth that God is still speaking. God's spirit is blowing, breathing, and burning through us and through God's word to bring us to a new place, to bring us into contact with new people, to keep God and God's word alive and able to speak to this moment, to this time, with fresh visions of compassion and justice for a world that is desperate for a better story than the one we have been living. Thank you for being a home to me these past three years. Thank you for being a community that has the courage to face what is hard and stay together on the path toward making Christ's compassion and justice real. God is still speaking. And here 
we are willing to listen and respond. Thanks be to God. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of all creation, thank you for the majesty of the oceans and the elegance of sunsets. We praise you for the awe-inspiring creation you have given us as our home. It can feel dissonant then when we look around at our world this year, seeing the consequences of social inequalities we have ignored and legions of people who are suffering because of our nation's collective inaction. Forgive us for allowing injustice to continue and move us out of complacency and numbness. Help us to have the collective self-efficacy to believe that we can work to bring healing to injustice, health inequalities, and our poisoned environment. Stir us to grieve the terrible damage we have done and to move through the grief into a hopeful future where we see healing that is possible through the resurrection example you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, thank you for creating each of us in your image. What a humbling gift. You exhort us to love our neighbor, but we struggle to treat people as bearers of your image. 
In a world where people abuse power to harm the vulnerable, often in our name as Americans, it feels like an impossible task to honor the image of God and act with grace as we engage those in power without becoming complicit with injustice. Guide us as we grapple with how to be instruments of your grace to people who abuse power, as well as how to lift up and protect victims of injustice, and honestly assess our own role in these systems. It's confusing and difficult, and it can feel impossible if we let it. Help us fix our eyes on you and seek your wisdom, knowing that you are with us as we wrestle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we thank you for promising to walk with us through our difficult times of illness and struggle, of desperation and loneliness. We thank you for knowing our needs when all we have are sighs too deep for words. We pray that you would wrap your loving, healing arms around all who are struggling in low places physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually today. We especially lift up Larry and Becky Trover, grateful for improvement in Larry's condition and for Becky's continued health. We pray for Val Farnham that he would be encouraged on this journey when it's so difficult to be deprived of the groups and gatherings that bring him joy. We pray for all of those suffering under the crushing weight of loneliness and isolation during this time that makes us cry out, how long, O Lord, how long? We pray for those whose needs are close to our heart, whom we lift up to you now, silently or loud. Sustain them and give them comfort, rest, and encouragement for the road ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the faithful example of Fellowship Lutheran Church in Columbus, and we ask that they might experience the breath of your Spirit in their congregational life. We thank you for Redeemer members Val Farnham, Maureen Callahan, and Margie Farnham for the many ways they have enriched our community by sharing their gifts with us through the years. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, we thank you for the surprising moments of joy and lightness we find in times that feel hopeless. Help us to notice and appreciate when those moments happen. Empower us to resist despair, cynicism, and catastrophic thinking, training us to thank you for the opportunities we have to work for justice and healing, and trusting that nothing is ever beyond the reach of your love and the possibility of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we place all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In today's message, I talked about the ways that faithful followers of Jesus need to break free from the old ways that we have understood Scripture so we can hear that still speaking God calling us to take those old words and turn them into something that is alive with the compassion and justice of Jesus. As we receive and share the peace of Christ today, I invite you to think of someone who has helped you hear the words of Scripture in a new way. Someone who has helped you break free from old understandings that limited the compassion and justice of the scriptures. Imagine sharing the peace of Christ with that person who helped you realize that God is still speaking and calling us to larger ways of loving. If that person is still alive, I invite you to be in touch with that person today and thank them for loosing you from ways of understanding scripture that limited the compassion and justice of God. If that person is no longer alive, then offer them a prayer of thanksgiving. for giving you a larger vision of God's love. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Hi, 
Hi. In today's message, we heard a little bit about rules um, and how to follow the rules. And as kids, you have a lot of rules in your lives from a lot of different adults. Um, as a, both adults and kids, we really need to know and follow rules that are given to us in many situations. But it's also important that we have a way to think through how to make choices when there's a situation that doesn't have a rule or where the rules don't make sense or um, if the rules are kind of um, conflicting with each other or if we really feel that little voice in our heads that says this is not a, an appropriate rule, this is not a good rule. Um, and so we need to have a way to think through how to make choices in those situations, right? Um, and luckily, God gave us wisdom so that we can think for ourselves and um, think about how to make the right kinds of decisions. Jesus told his disciples in the Bible that they, and we still today, um, can read the Bible and pray and think about how to be faithful to God and think about what are the best ways to show God's love through our lives and our choices and our behaviors today. Um, that is a real gift and a responsibility. Uh, over the years, many people who study the Bible and, um, and study God's teachings have thought about what to do in new situations when rules aren't clear or if we just really feel like the rules aren't right. Um, and one of the best things we can do in situations like that is think about how can I show love and kindness in this moment? What is the best way to be loving and kind right now? That's kind of a guiding principle that if we're a little confused about how to behave, confused about how the rules should apply, lack having a rule at all, um, we can think about how can I show loving kindness in this moment right now. Um, and so that's something good that we can remember. Um, if we ever feel confused, we can, we can kind of try to do that. Um, and we can be grateful that God gave us that wisdom, that we can use our brains and, and follow that wisdom from God to try to seek out the most loving, kind path. So if you'll join me in a quick prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us wisdom and an example in the Bible of how to make our choices when our choices aren't clear or obvious to us. Help us always remember to take a pause and think about how we can be the most loving and the most kind in a particular moment. Um, and help us especially be brave to do that when we're in situations where we have rules but the rules are not right. Thank you, dear Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the beginning, the Spirit brooded time into being so that God could give form to the world. At the Incarnation, the Spirit breathed God's time into being so that the world could receive the Word. Through Pentecost, the Spirit brought transformed time into being so that the Word could meet us everywhere. Holy God, your Christ sends the Spirit to be a companion to all who follow your way. As inheritors of both the challenge and comfort of your way, we join with all who have made this journey in other times and places raising our voices in this timeless song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Entering these gifts of bread and wine, the Spirit blesses this time and makes Christ alive in this meal to comfort, challenge, and transform us. God has prepared a room for us, fire to warm our hearts, water to wash our weary feet, the table set and waiting. And now from beyond time, the breath of the Spirit comes whispering through the fabric of time to call us in. So come, whether your time is just beginning or many years in the making, whether your hours are filled and fruitful or wanting and withered, 
whether you have invested wisely or buried your coins in the ground. For here at this table, through the power of the Spirit, God's time and our time come together in bread and wine, a place of timeless and timely grace. We recall how Jesus, drawing near to the end of his time on earth, ate a last meal with his friends. We remember how his words and actions disturbed and dismayed them, but also how he offered them comfort and encouragement for the time to come. We remember that he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them saying, take this and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Each time you drink of this, do so to remember me. Hear us now, as at this time, we commit ourselves to your way and pray the prayer Jesus taught us. As we share these gifts of grace, may the Holy Spirit take and transform them that we may know both their comfort and their challenge and so transform ourselves and our time. Here is bread and wine, touched and transformed by the Spirit. Come, eat and drink and be healed and strengthened for this time and for the time to come. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us return thanks to God. Spirit, you who mothered creation and enabled incarnation, continue to form and nurture us as we stumble towards maturity. Spirit, you who led Jesus into the wilderness, stir us out of ease and safety as we follow the way of Christ. Spirit, you who transformed the disciples, grace and gift us for the task of building the beloved community Christ lived, died, and was raised for. Spirit, you whom Jesus sends as friend, continue to comfort and discomfort us until justice prevails, peace reigns, and love directs all. Amen.
receive God's blessing from her servant, Maya Angelou. Continue to be who and how you are, to astonish a mean world with acts of kindness. Continue to remind people that each is as good as the other and that no one is beneath or above you. Continue to take the hand of the despised and diseased and to walk proudly with them. Continue to dare to love deeply and risk everything for the good thing. Continue to let gratitude be the pillow upon which you kneel to say your nightly prayer. And let faith be the bridge you build to overcome evil and welcome good. Continue. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace today and in all the days to come. Amen.